Hi, my name is Matthew Fuller, and I'm currently an intern at Mozilla working on the security assurance team and focusing on web application security. So today I'm going to be continuing our tutorial of Zap and talking a little bit about the interface of Zap and trying to explain a little bit how it's set up and will hopefully help you understand um, how the proxy works. So opening up Zap, I've already loaded a website on the left hand side here. I just wanted to talk a little bit about this interface. So on the left we have our sites and Zap loads each of the sites in a new tree menu item. So as you can see here, uh, these are the three domains that we've visited and um, we have web scan test as our first domain. Our other two domains were likely loaded in the background. Within each of these sites, uh, Zap then separates this into the subfolders, and then within the subfolders, the actual pages. So in order to construct a full URL here, you can see that we first went to webscantest.com slash cross training, cross training being the folder here. And then finally, the aboutu2.php page, which is a file nested within the cross-training folder. And this is uh, continued for each subfolder that's visited, and these can be expanded and collapsed as necessary. Now on the right-hand side, we have a number of uh, buttons. Uh, the most noticeable of those buttons are the Request and Response and Break tabs. The request tab shows you each time that a uh, request is made using the selected page on the left. So I'm going to select this get request that was made to the aboutu2.php page. And on the right hand side you can see the headers that were sent in the request. If I click the response tab I can see the top part which are the headers that were sent along with the response and the bottom pane here Notice this is a two-pane uh, window. The bottom pane shows the exact response text. In this case, it's the HTML that comprises the page that was returned to the user within the browser. Uh, the break tab isn't in use at the moment, but if we set a break on the left-hand side here, uh, what a breakpoint does is it pauses the request and allows you to modify it in transit. So I'm going to add a breakpoint here and then if we go to our application and then we simply, uh, let's see, this was the about you 2 within cross training. So if we go to cross training and then about you 2 which is right here. And you can notice that the page is continuing to load. Um, but now we're able to see our breakpoint. So what this does is it allows you to actually specifically modify the request that's being sent along. And then using the buttons at the top, you can submit and continue to the next breakpoint. Um, now you see that the breakpoint changes as we receive our response. And we can actually change our response mid-transit and then submit this. And when we go back to our browser, you'll see that the title has been changed to match our particular change that we made here within the breakpoint. So now moving along to the bottom part of the application window, you'll notice a number of tabs. And uh, starting with the history tab, this tab keeps track of all of the requests that are made um, and then categorizes them by get and post on the left here. Uh, and these are all of the requests that are made to the application. The search tab allows us to search for a, a term that we may have seen uh, fly by as we were scanning the application. And then finally, the breakpoints here allow us to view all of the different breakpoints that we've set. In this case, I only have one breakpoint set at the moment. And you can use this pane to disable and enable the breakpoints. Continuing through the list of tabs here, we come to the alerts tab. And Zap sets a number of alerts as it passively scans the requests and responses that are sent in and out of the application. And it attempts to determine whether or not particular vulnerabilities exist. So as you can see, uh, Zap's determined that on these pages, the X-Frame Options header has not been set. And by clicking on one of these, 
you can view more details about it on the right hand side. Uh, double clicking one of these will open a new window um, with a full description of the vulnerability. Uh, the active scan allows you to perform a scan uh, using known vulnerabilities against a target. And Spider will allow you to spider the site. Uh, and what that does is follow a number of URLs that it finds within the HTML responses. And then it will um, follow each of those URLs uh, to a certain provided depth level. Brute Force allows you to use a specified word list, uh, in this case any number of directory lists, um, to enumerate a list of directories that may be present but not necessarily linked to within that application. Uh, the port scanner provides a simple interface for doing a basic port scan of the app. And the fuzzer is only going to appear when you choose an option to fuzz. So for example, if I have a um, parameter, and in order to generate a parameter, let's go to our application here and type in Bob and submit it. Uh, now you can see here that a post was made, and if you go to the request, uh, we can select an option. So for example, Bob, we can select it to fuzz. And now, down in the fuzzer panel, you can see each of the requests that are made as the fuzzing occurs. Now going on to the parameters page, Zap attempts to keep a list of all of the parameters that are used. Uh, so here you can see it had F name, L name, nickname, and the values that are provided for that parameter. So moving on from the panels to some more of the options that are available within the interface, uh, right-clicking on any of these options on the left-hand side provides a, a drop-down menu that provides quick access for attacking a particular page. In this case, when I right-clicked on this page, I can spider this site, uh, brute force this site, uh, do a port scan of the host, an active scan of the site, or an active scan of the node. Uh, site will scan the entire URL and the node will only scan the particular subdirectory or page that you're on. Excluding from the app, it allows you to select a particular page or entire URL to exclude from either the proxy as a whole, the scanner, or the spider. You can then run applications that you've configured. Uh, you can delete a request that's been made, set a breakpoint, you can also resend the alert, uh, resend the request, I'm sorry. You can also create a new alert about the page, which allows you to sort of provide notes for yourself as you're doing a scan on the application. Uh, you can also open the URL that you've selected in your browser, and you can save the response and request headers or the actual text of the response. Right click on the response or request tab over here, allow you to do things such as fuzzing. You can also encode or decode if it's a, a hash. You can also copy the text. So in this case, uh, we showed you how we can do a fuzzing of the F name parameter here by clicking fuzz. So as you can see, Zap is set up. Uh, Left-hand pane has the sites. Right-hand side contains the request and responses that are being made and received. And the bottom are the action items where you can perform various tasks, uh, such as setting breakpoints, scanning, spidering, brute forcing, etc. So that's a pretty comprehensive overview of the uh, interface that Zap has. If you have any questions about this, leave a comment on the video and we'll try to help you out. Thanks for watching and be sure to stay tuned and subscribe to the channel for additional videos about Zap and other web security techniques and tools.